Hey what's happening guys this is Minit and you're watching V Diaries. What we have in the house today is Motorola X4. Moto X series is once known a flagship series for Motorola and now it is available at mid-range price segment. We are going to unbox this thing and going to have a closer look at it. Now before jumping into the video if you're not subscribed to my channel hit that red subscribe button and do that thing with the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever I upload something interesting on my channel. So without any further ado Let's get started. Motorola seems in no mood to stop releasing new smartphones every month. But this one in particular stole my heart because of its not so Motorola-ish design. Starting with the unboxing part, this comes with two color variants, super black that I have here and a sterling blue. It has two storage and RAM options. One with 3 GB and 32 GB will cost you 21,000 rupees and a higher 4 GB and 64 GB cost for 23,000 Indian rupees. Going further inside, it comes with a 15 watt power brick that will give 7 hours of backup in just 15 minutes. Well, at least Qualcomm claims that. The sad part is the adapter is not available if you want to buy it separately. Further, we have USB to Type C cable and quite surprising to see uh, in-ear style headphones with Motorola phone. They're still plasticky though, it has a call button but no volume rockers. Design-wise the phone looks stunning. The glass on the both side and aluminum metal frame brings beauty to its appearance. The phone is quite comfortable to hold in hand, little slippery though. The back despite being so shiny, it doesn't attract fingerprints that easily. With the desperation of making the phone thinner, the camera bump is huge. I mean, it's huge. Getting a case that protects the lens is always advisable. Over at the front, you have 16 megapixel front facing camera with f2.0 aperture. It has one micron pixel size. To make selfies brighter, Motorola has given a single LED flash at the front. An earpiece and some sensor at the top followed by a 5.2 inch 1080p LTPS LCD panel. This is followed by a fingerprint sensor and that sums the front. This fingerprint sensor can also work as a navigation key if you choose so. You can activate it through the preloaded Moto app. Navigation keys are present on the screen by default. The display on the back is protected with Corning Ulla Glass 3. This front certainly doesn't look like a 2017 model with that chunky forehead and big chin. But one thing that Motorola has done well is that they have put a forward firing speaker in the earpiece. At the back it has a dual camera setup. The main camera with 12 megapixel f2.0 aperture which also has a dual AF pixel sensor and 1.4 micron pixel size. The second camera is an ultra wide angle 8 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture. It provides 120 degree field of view and has 1.12 micron pixel size. It is supported with dual LED flash that adjusts with the color temperature with the help of one amber and one white light. The main camera has phase detection autofocus and can shoot 4K videos at 30 frames per second. The SIM tray at the top has a hybrid SIM slot. It can accept dual SIM cards or a primary SIM and an SD card. On the right you have volume up and down buttons and a textured power button. Buttons has nice tactile feedback to them. One awesome thing about this phone is that despite of having open ports and 3.5mm headphone jack, the phone has managed to get a IP68 certification. Which means the phone has water and dust resistance which Motorola hasn't done in a while. And it is the only phone in this price range that has IP68 certification. With all the hardware, the phone has managed to keep itself lighter by weighing only 163 grams. What is running all this thing is Snapdragon 630 chipset with Adreno 5 GPU. Now this is a new mid-range CPU by Snapdragon after their huge success with 625 which has been used by many mobile companies. The 630 is an octa-core CPU clocked at 2.2 GHz. It has a 3 GB of RAM and it also comes with 4 GB higher RAM variant. The benchmark scores are quite satisfying and high-end gaming and day-to-day -day tasks won't seem to be an issue with this phone. I will cover all these aspects in my full review of this phone. This phone is powered with 3000 mAh battery. Now this phone has Bluetooth 4.0 but with the Oreo update that will be also upgraded to Bluetooth 5.0. This phone supports the wireless sound system where you can connect 4 different wireless speakers with Bluetooth connection and play music through this phone. 
This phone has standard things like FM radio that can be used even without the headphones plugged in. The stock UI is buttery smooth and it comes with Android Nougat 7.1.1 with promised audio update end of this year if not early next year. The Moto app allows you to enable and disable gestures on this phone like starting a camera by twisting the phone or chopping the phone to turn the torch on and off. Like Google Lock and Apple Touch ID, Motorola has included a Moto Key feature in this Moto app. This will allow you to store the credentials and log into various website or various devices with your fingerprint unlock feature. I will try to demonstrate this in my full review. The camera is standard to Motorola's previous generation phones that hosted dual camera setup. You can shoot photos with depth enabled mode and can play with the captured image by adjusting the depth. You can also remove the background and replace it with the different image. A new feature that can be seen on this app is the spotlight mode where you can choose any color from the picture and make the rest of the colors black and white. The best part about this feature is that you can do it while clicking the picture and not only in the post production. You can also click photos with pro mode where you can adjust things like ISO, white balance and exposure. One bummer with the camera app is that while taking pictures with these special modes like depth or spotlight, the shutter lags noticeably. I hope Motorola fixes this with software update. Now I'll be posting a detailed review that will cover all the aspects of this phone like gaming, camera and performance. But going by my first impression, the phone does appear to be rock solid with all the features and hardware that is packed inside. The camera in its various modes opens up many possibilities of smartphone photography and considering the niche price bracket where there aren't many phones competing, this phone stands a good chance. I have put the link to purchase this phone in the description below. Please use that link to help my channel. I hope this video helped you. If it did, show some love by pressing that like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button twice and post your feedback in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This is Vinit signing off. You people have a wonderful time and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.